Take it away. Go ahead. I gotta take it away. Go ahead, take it away. <laughs> what do I say? Hey, this is Matt Day. I forget what your start is. I'm like, Matt I'm Day. Like, I'm like, what's up, guys? Smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> if you're part of the notification squad. Oh what's up, guys? Matt Day here. Uh, I'm here by. Uh, I'm here with my friend Josh Hillman. Uh, Josh is from up north in Toronto, and uh, he's joined me here this week. And with him, he brought some cameras. And we thought we would kind of talk about some of these cameras. Um, I actually met Josh because he watched these videos and we just started talking through social media. He ended up uh, designing my logo for my uh, engraving business, Memorial Lettering. And uh, yeah, ever since then we've headed off. Usually we, uh, through Xbox Live, hang out, play games, drink beer, that kind of thing. Pretty much. And uh, so yeah, Josh has been here all week and uh, we've been shooting a lot of photos and he brought two cameras here that I've never shot myself personally. So uh, I thought while he was here, we'd go ahead and talk about these because um, they're completely new to me and hopefully for some of you guys watching, they'll be new as well. So um, yeah, I thought it'd be fun to get Josh involved here. So out of these two cameras, which, well, first of all, what do you have here? What are these two cameras? Sure. Here? So this is the uh, uh, Roloflex SL35. Right. Uh, and then this one here is the Yashica Flex, and I believe this is Model A. Uh, so this is definitely the older one. Okay. Um, this one here, though, I got about a year ago uh, mm -hmm. from my dad. Um, reason being, I was stuck shooting the same cameras time after time. So I had the uh, Pentax K1000, the Canon AE1, right. and I just wanted to try something different. Um, originally, I was actually looking for a medium format camera. Yeah. Um, so that's what I asked for for Christmas. Just, yeah. Guys, In medium <laughs> format camera. <laughs> yeah. um, but they couldn't get one, so my dad ended up getting this. And at first, I was like, great, another 35, 35 SLR. And there, a lot of them are so similar. Yeah. But not this one. This one's awesome. Uh, yeah. Whenever, it's... yeah. Whenever you first got into town and I picked this one up, and that was one of the first things I was like, "This is different from yeah. most 35 yeah. SLRs." It's it's heavy, but it's got it's 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 durable. It, this is an awesome camera, and yeah. I picked this one up. Well, I got I got this one from my dad, but right. when I picked it up the first time, I was trying to figure out how to use it because I'm so used to seeing the light meter right off the bat. This right. one doesn't have this one right off the bat. So you actually have your uh, preview button here yeah. before you shoot. And then when you cock um, and shoot that way, you, you have to take that off. So it right. took some getting used to, um, gotcha. but it's it's an awesome camera. And yeah, yeah. I mean, that like design wise, like I love, you know, it's super, super clean. Like on top here, you don't have much going on and that's what I like about it. Your ISO or your film speed selector is inside the shutter speed, which I always like that because yeah. it's just one less thing that's yeah. kind of getting condensed into, you know, one area. But the the frame counter here, just a small window to the left of the rewind lever. I like that. Um, I mean, it's it's super minimalistic in terms of that kind of stuff. The preview for your exposure, or not your exposure, but your uh, depth of field, yeah. having that right there was something I'm not used to because normally there's like a little lever. Yeah, on the side, yeah. you flick it right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you got a self timer here. I mean, it's 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 a solid little camera, but it's like, it's super simple. Um, the lens itself, I, we talked about that as well. Mm -hmm. Like it, it reminds me of a Leica Sumicron lens in terms yeah. of like the design and everything yeah, yeah. and like the feel of it. Um, but really just the, like, it, it seems weird. It seems like such a small thing, but like when I first saw the depth of field scale and like the numbers and stuff, yeah. it looks like one of those lenses. It does, yeah. But, um, but I've seen, you know, a lot of photos that you've shot with this and the results are awesome. Yeah. Really, really nice. It's a, uh, what is this, a planar design? Yeah, so it's a planar. It's actually, from my research that I did on it, I've got a uh, filter on it at the moment, but yeah. uh, from the research I did on it, it's actually a Zeiss lens, and when they first started making these, uh, they did some with Zeiss branding on them, and then others did not. With, with the, yeah, the Rolly This branding. is the one that's not, and it's got the Rolly branding, uh, branding on it, but it, it is a Zeiss lens, um, yeah. and you can see that from the inside. It's Zeiss lens, but not necessarily a Zeiss price, maybe. That's kind of the exactly. nice thing about the, re exactly. the rebranded stuff. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and a lot of people they get uh, with Leica lenses, they're like, I want the German made version, not the Canadian version. Yeah. And 
Sure, you can pay the German price if you want, but a lot of times, because of that, you can see the Canadian version. Absolutely. Get an amazing lens, yeah. but, but pay less. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's awesome, man. And super smooth. It's super, super smooth. smooth. It is very tight. Like you are, if you miss it by a second, like your focus goes on and off, like yeah. on the just a minimal turn. But yeah, yeah. it's perfect when you're, you're doing that. So it's a lot slower than you know your Pentax K1000. Right. Yeah. That, to, yeah. That's to try to focus the, the this throw is versus longer. that. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. you're turning a lot more. Yeah. I've noticed, but it's. I like a. I mean, I would rather it be like this than loose, where you can accidentally, accidentally miss it. unfocus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. No, it's perfect. Once you get it, you're good to go. And it's got an automatic uh, setting as well, um, and a oh, manual. Nice. So I've been shooting on a manual for yeah, the yeah. entire time I've had it. But that's you awesome. do have that setting, and it's that's it's not, a sweet. Yeah, camera. I didn't even realize that that you had an option for that. So that's yeah, that's awesome, man. And yeah. that's for like like, and so just so people aren't. Um, like confused by that automatic in terms of exposure not focusing like Correct. aperture priority type Correct. setup okay Correct. Right. yeah it's just like an aperture priority so yeah. um yeah it's cool they actually made a couple different versions of this so this one actually if you look on the back it says uh Roly by singapore and i believe oh, okay. the first uh chunk of these was actually made in germany and those ones broke all the time gotcha. um, so they ended up removing the name and i believe that's one of the reasons and I could be wrong in this, but I believe yeah. that's one of the reasons that the Zeiss name is not on the slides. Okay. So they moved it over to Singapore, did pretty much everything the same, yeah. fixed all the bugs, and came out with this one. But that's sweet, man. These I mean, ones are black. The other ones were silver. So see, I like this. So I like, do I. I like yeah. it's. It's not like. Um, I mean, it. It kind of has like a little bit of a gloss, but it's not super like shiny like some of the yeah. other like my fm2 i feel like was shinier than this i like this it's kind of a mix in between it's a nice finish but oh you had um, the black fm2 i had the black it molly has the silver see, yeah I molly know. has the silver i had the black see i've always wanted the black one yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's no this is it, this is good the, the full black camera was always great like i live in toronto so shooting downtown toronto yeah. if you're wearing black shirts it it yeah, sits it, right on it yeah, yeah. so it's it's nice to be able to do some street photography with this yeah so as where's the pentax it stands yeah right yeah so this one here, the Ashika Flex, yeah. obviously it's a TLR. Um, whenever you first mentioned this, you, you texted me a picture of it, uh, like right whenever you got it. And I was like, I've never seen a Yashica Flex before. You know, I had the, the 124G. Yeah. And I think the Yashica Mat 124 series is one that a lot of people are, you know, really uh, familiar with. Yeah. But I'd never really seen the Yashica Flex. And there, there are so many different kinds of TLRs from that day. Yep. So like we were talking about how similar this is to the, the Sears, the Sears brand. one you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Upstairs, I, yeah. I have a, a tower reflex made by Sears and it's like a knockoff TLR from way back in the day. So I know how common TLRs were back then of different names and stuff, but I'd never seen the Ashika Flex. So uh, yeah, tell us about how you got this one and, and you know what your experience is. Yeah, been. sure. So um, every now and then in Toronto, they've got um, trade shows you can go to. So right. I think they're like seven bucks or something. And you, you go in the front door and you pay your seven bucks. And when you go in it, they've got probably 70 to 80 people set up with little booths. Yeah, yeah. And they've got film, expired film, new cameras, old cameras mainly stuff like this and like this you'll right. find there yeah yeah um so the last i've gone to a few of them the last one i went to i was my only goal was to get expired film yeah and a tlr yeah that was it so i walked around I for a couple <laughs> i nailed it yeah so i actually got i actually got brand new film for yeah. an expired price so right it was, right it was perfect yeah. so um, so I ended up finding this. I was looking for the 124 that you were just mentioning, mm -hmm. but the guy was looking for 300, 400 bucks for it, and I just you, you can. I mean, it's a great camera, but you can find you can cheaper. find them for cheaper. Yeah, so yeah. I didn't I didn't want it, and um, I ended up seeing this beside, and it had the Yashica name on it. So I said, "What are you What are you looking for?" He, he wanted 50 bucks. I offered him 40. He said, "Sure." And I came home with 40. Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure if it was working. I wasn't sure if anything. When I got but, it home, I mean. It, you could. T I'm sure. I know you said you had to clean it up a little bit. Yep. But just wiping it down and it looks this good. Yeah. I mean, that's you know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's got its flaws, but I mean, we've been shooting it all week yeah. and the it's the great. the pictures are awesome. Yeah. So the uh, the only things that were kind of dirty right off the bat that I haven't still gotten in and clean is the uh, the viewfinder. Like going in there and looking down at that, you can see that it's a little it, little dusty it, and it right, needs and, work. But but for especially for like outdoor shooting, yeah. it makes a big difference once you step outside. Like indoors, you can kind of tell. Yeah. But stepping outside, I mean, um, my my original Yashica Mat viewfinder was it was pretty similar. Yeah. Um, it was it was pretty dim in, indoors. Uh, but once I got outside, it, it made a world of difference. And was that the one you got the uh, the replacement on, or was that the Roloflex? I did. I did. So well, I, both of them actually. Oh, both of them? So yeah. so the Roloflex I had. 
the uh, Maxwell screen, yeah. which was, uh, gosh, I mean, it was like $300 screen, but it was like, I got that camera with the full intention of paying for like a brand new CLA new or, or yeah. you know, having a CLA done a brand new screen put in. And I wanted to like really just overhaul that thing completely. Yeah. So I, I went in going, you know, I went into it knowing that I was going to do that. Um, but the Yashica mat, I just thought, you know, the, the viewfinder could be a little bit brighter and I just came across, I was just like looking for options. You know, I was like Googling like different viewfinders or different focusing screens yeah. or whatever for, uh, for Yashica mat. And I came across a guy named Rick Olson who makes them for various cameras. And he had a list of compatible cameras that he, that he could do that for. And the Yashica mat was one of them. And I had looked up like, I just Googled Rick Olson Yashica mat you know, yeah, to yeah. see what other people, if anybody yeah. talked about it on forums and people swore by him. So I got one, you install it yourself. And he gives you like detailed instructions. It was super, like super easy. And put yeah, it, right it was really, really because I was worried about you know throwing off the focus on it. That's I, why I had him touch this, right? Yeah. But it, yeah. it was really, really simple. Um, and so I made I, <laughs> I shared that in the video and talked about it, and a lot of people were ordering them. And since then, he's raised his price a lot because, because of, of it. Thanks, Matt. So I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> but it, it was, but it, it was, at the time it was like. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was maybe forty or fifty bucks. Yeah, and it made a, it made enough of a difference to justify that tenfold. It, yeah. yeah, yeah, but and you had like different. Yeah, I was gonna say you could get different. Um, like the grid, the grid inside. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so mine, I think I had mine. I had it do. Um, I did like rule of thirds, maybe, and then maybe a prism, like a split prism. Yeah, as yeah. well. I think so, if I remember right. Um, but yeah, it definitely made a difference. Yeah, yeah, so, for sure. so yeah, well. We'll take a look at this. It might this might be a, a compatible version for that. So it might be something you want to look into. Yeah, Unless for sure. I mean, if it's easy to switch yourself, yeah. like I'm definitely looking. I mean, I, I see myself using this more and more now. Um, right. I would say I, after this week, we've developed a lot. I think we've done three rolls through this this yeah. week alone, and I shot one back in Toronto. So it's yeah. it's been good. But yeah, what's cool about this one is it's not necessarily rare. I wouldn't call it a rare camera, but it's it's hard to find. Right, and like I said, I mean, I've, I've never seen one. Yeah, you know? I didn't realize it. So I got it home and I was trying to look at, you know, just basic, it, for most TLRs, they're really pretty much the same to yeah, load, right. the same to, uh, to, to afford the film, everything. But I couldn't find anything on this and it, it was really difficult to. And I ended up coming down and uh, finding a couple websites uh, way deep into like an hour of Googling, which yeah. I'm sure we can link in the Yeah, yeah, the we'll put links below. for all the resources for this if, yeah. for anybody interested. And um, yeah, it's an old camera. I think it was like 50, 1956. Um, they made tons of different versions of this. They actually made um, a version here. So this one's just a push button. Mm -hmm. um, but we were talking about this yesterday, if this unscrews, it does not because yeah. they actually do a cable release version where oh, it is into in the lens. here and you always have to have the cable release. Right. So I just actually remembered that checking that out. Yeah, so yeah. it's tons of different versions of this camera, but it's been a it's been a pleasure to shoot. It's yeah. easy to focus. And for for medium format, for people getting into it, um, I always recommend TLRs as like yeah. your first one. I didn't have one as my first medium format camera, but I think I mean I, I my first one was my RB67. Yeah. And the waist level viewfinder, like, you know, it's it's similar in that regard. Yeah. But this is so compact. Yeah. So for people to like get used to carrying around what's tech or what's traditionally going to be a little bit bigger camera yeah. because you're working with a bigger negative. Yeah. I mean, comparing this to the size of this, yeah. it's I, form factor different. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think the weight. This is probably heavier. Yeah, that's heavier. This is probably and, heavier. And this sitting right in front. I mean, it's it's a conversation starter. So if you're walking around town and shooting it, it's a great conversation piece. You yeah. know. But um, I just love TLRs. The there's a lot of charm to them, but. Um, yeah, this is a really, really solid option. I think uh, it's interesting. the The maximum shutter speed on this one is one two hundredth of a second. Yes. So it's fine. being used to you know thousandth of a second yes. on something like this versus two hundred, it, it can be a challenge. Yeah, know? and I, I rarely shoot under five hundred. Right. I, that is yeah. that's that's and, where I that's where I'm comfortable. That's where I stay. Yeah. So. And I know you push film as well, just like me. So yeah. It's like. That makes it even tougher. Yeah, so yeah. with this, I'm always pushing HP5 uh, two stops. Yeah. This, this I'm uh, this entire time I've been shooting box. Box, yeah. So, and it's at HP5 as well, but yeah. that that's pretty much what I'm shooting with this. Yeah, and it's, and it's got an 80 millimeter lens, which is pretty standard for most TLRs. F3.5, which is great. Um, yeah, this is a solid little option, man. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure a lot of people watching have uh, never heard of it or never really seen it or at least more information on it. Um, but there's a good chance some people watching this might be one of their go-tos as well, you know. So, yeah. 
um, yeah, that was the whole kind of point of this. I wanted to bring you on and show some of these cameras because I'm always looking for different cameras and, uh, you know, all the differences in them. I like sharing that kind of stuff. And I know a lot of people like watching that stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, appreciate you joining me on this video, man, okay. and sharing your cameras and uh, shooting some film all week. So, uh, where can everybody, where can everybody find you, find your work? Go sure. ahead and get, get, get a plug in real quick. Yeah, know? I was going to say, um, <laughs> All my stuff's pretty much on uh, Instagram right now at the Analog Book. Uh, you can find me there. Uh, Matt's been plugging me a couple times this week, so I'm sure you can find uh, uh, one of his pictures with my tag. But <laughs> other than that, it's the Analog Book. Uh, I got a website where you can order some prints. Uh, reach out to me. Um, that's it. Awesome. Well, yeah. So if you guys have any questions about any of this stuff, uh, feel free to ask those in the comments. Josh can maybe jump, jump on in. there and I'll he'll kind of keep an eye on them and try and answer some questions as well. So. Yeah, thank you guys for everything. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.